you'd actually be surprised how much one event and, and a handful of relationships can impact somebody. So it's not to say that that one event taught me everything I knew, but that one event definitely just set you on track. It set me on wow. track because I did like, I'll give you the most practical aspect of this whole thing. I didn't want to make thumbnails. I thought thumbnails were cringe. I thought thumbnails were, were whack. I was like, I mean, That's they are so... kind of cringe and whack for right? what they work. <laughs> but, but what happened was he sat me down, Sean from Think Media sat me down and goes, you need to sit down with vidIQ. And they did like yep. a channel assessment. And that was one of the things they walked away with. Was like, cause, I, Cause I was also struggling like, man, I don't want to make this kind of content. And they're like, okay, it's fine. You're a novelty channel. You're going to talk about a lot of different stuff. Cool. However, you got to make thumbnails. And so I walked away from that with like one really practical point. They're like, I have to do this. Yeah. And that is, again, I'm at 5,000 subscribers. And so that like catapults me to 15,000 subscribers in a year, which is, you know, what is that? A 3X, you know, uh, increase. Yeah, yeah. You it's know? like 200% growth. Right, right. Growth. And so so, so there was that. I, I would say in, in terms of all of it, it's hard to describe the YouTube stuff because the YouTube stuff, once it clicked, it just compounded. Like once it all clicked, they just compounded, right? Wow. Now you're going to have ebbs and flows. Summer months are slow. January, the CPMs and the RPMs go down, right? So that's always going to happen, right? So less people are watching June, July. YouTube's paying less in January because December, everybody blasted out their ad spends on YouTube ads. Right, so th those things are happening, but in terms of the consistent, like it's been fairly consistent in, in trajectory up. Now, the way I learned everything is I was doing music. I wanted to record myself. So twenty something years ago, my mom got me a computer. I was one of the first people that had like a PC. I learned to record myself. I learned to make my own beats. Then I wanted to shoot more music videos. This is two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Not a lot of people were doing music videos. Two thousand nine, two thousand ten. So my buddy had a DSLR. He shot the videos, but it would he would charge me less if I would edit them. And so the same software I was making music on had a version of the software for video. Same shortcuts, same workflow, same outline. Stacked that skill from music to video editing. Shot a bunch of my own music videos. And then that led me to getting Final Cut Pro and getting my own DSLR. And then I started uh, helping other artists. And then my buddy Daniel, who I told you about earlier, said, hey, let's do a video announcement for the church, a fake video announcement for the church. Video announcements are super hot in 2012, end of 2012. So I got a job at the church. That's how I learned broadcasting because I learned video switchers, cameras, all these things. And I wasn't even really that good, but he kind of finessed me a job at the church to do video announcements. And so that's how I got the job at church. By the time I, I worked at the church for two years, at the end of that, I know a whole lot. And then wow. the video switchers, it wasn't a $5,000 video switcher that the, the, all of a sudden the, the, the price went down. So then we have a $1,000 video switcher. Okay, I could afford that. Let me scrape together some money to get that. And then that's when I said, okay, now I could do stuff like this, which is cut cameras live in person while I'm traveling. And then I just kept learning the tech, you know? So that, that was the trajectory of like the, the tech side of it.